The Culture Kings compilations. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess a scene, you know, as like the Australian hip hop compilations. Um, and I think there's footage of the second gig maybe in Adelaide and it looked, mm-hmm. you know, it looked pretty epic. Now, yeah. the first one dropped in 2000 um, and you had a song on there with Reason, yep. I think, Melways. Um so yeah, I guess, you know, tell us a little bit about, first of all, the song that you guys did and how you guys ended up on there mm-hmm. and um, what sort of impact you think that that first Culture of Kings had on Australian hip hop? Mm-hmm. Well, the track was originally off Freeze and Solid album. Uh, Joel's made the beat. Uh, it was just a, an idea we came up with and wrote some raps together and went over to Joel's. I remember recording it and he had, there was only sound in one ear. I mean, he couldn't work out how to get sound in two. So I remember trying to rap it and really struggling to get the, the words out. Just was quite confusing. Um, yeah, Reason was you know, pretty close with all the Adelaide people. So he put that track on there. At the time, I was a bit of, oh, I'm doing my own thing. I don't need to be a part of this, which is probably a stupid move at the time. But um, yeah, so Reason put that track on. I don't think I even got, it was just said Reason on the back. I don't even know if it said Reason and Bias. But uh, yeah, at the time, it really like blew up. It was, um, I did get some, I think that was one of the first things to get proper radio play on Triple J. But the problem was the double CD, they'd get it wrong. So they'd say they're going to play A-Love and they'd play Ken Oath or something like that. So it was a bit of, bit of trouble for them there with the lyrical content they were getting. Uh, but yeah, they were really big sold out shows and that was sort of the big, when, yeah, it became, everyone was coming together at that point. It wasn't just us just then, it was sort of, you had Lazy in Brisbane. There was some, you know, Deathwish cast and stuff doing people, you know, doing things in Sydney. Then you had sort of, you know, Lyrical Commission before they were formed, Reeves and Pack. We sort of, there's just small little groups. But then sort of everyone was coming out the woodwork and all these people you'd never heard of. So all of a sudden all this talent came from nowhere. Yeah, and then so it was it Dimes? Yeah. He, he put it together. Yeah. Um, and did PJ have a hand in that? It had something to do with pulling strings. I think maybe, I'm not exactly sure on the details. I think he just, you know, he had the hookups of everyone, PJ. Because yeah. he was the Hoods promoter at the time. Or manager, whatever he was. So mm. he was always with them. And then so when, like in the in the lead up to, you know, that coming out, like once the song's been submitted and that, mm-hmm. did you anticipate that the compilation would have the impact and do as well as it did? No, I never... I never anticipated for any album. I always, mm. even like my stuff, I never expected it to do that well. And then it sort of amazes me when it does do so well. But uh, I think, I'd, you know, it's not having, having your, high, your hopes too high and you just squash because you didn't get to where you want to get. So mm. I think always having it is all, if people buy it, that's great. With that sort of attitude, then anything better than that's a, a bonus. And then so was there an, like a, you know, like a launch night? for that here in Melbourne? Culture Kings, yeah, I had to host it. I'm trying to think of the nice things I can say. <laughs> Pretty much started off, Matty B got up there. He had 15 minutes, he had about half an hour. So we got about 20, 30 acts to get through. We're fucked from the start. And it's all on me. I'm not getting paid for it, I'm doing it as a pay for Shazlik, who was, you know, had obese at the time. And uh, yeah, everyone else having fun and partying and drinking and there's Paul Bias, he's got to host it and play it, you know, make sure you're ready in this time and this. Matey B just threw it. I hated the bloke. Then my mini disc player got racked. I'm out on uh, Swan Street, Richmond. And who pops up? Matey B. What's wrong with you, Bias? There's Matey's speech. So I saw him rack the mini disc player. Oh, fuck that. And he's, we actually became real good friends over it. But even like, you know, he goes and sees his mum down in Torquay. I just, you know, I had lunch with him a couple of months ago. But yeah, he was, he was, he, he, it was him to put the whole thing out. And then by the end, you know, the corner hotel, they're like one o'clock, it cuts off. There's no, we're not giving an extra half an hour. It doesn't happen at the corner. One o'clock, it sounds off, lights are on, you're gone. Mm. So trying to tell everyone, drop a track, drop a track. Painful. But everyone had a real good night. You know, it was a massive crowd and everyone there loved it. It was only me that hates it. Sorry to sound like a hater. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone knows, it's all right. I did meet a lot of good people, but they just probably thought, oh, this spy's a stressful bloke, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, no one of my better nights. And I sort of let it get to me. You know, I was a bit like, ah, oh, fuck. You know, by the end of it, rather than just being cool, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I was just trying to do a good job for Shazley. You know. So the gig in itself, though, was a big success. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was just stressful for yourself. <laughs> and so did all the acts get through the night, though? Like, Yeah, I believe had- so. I remember, I think, uh, Unique. Uh, so that was with Brass Knuckles. I think they were towards the end. Um, so I was just saying to dudes, you've got to drop tracks. You're just going to have to do it. I can't remember how it ended. Just in my mini disc disappearing. I didn't care after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone then, if someone's out there with it they know who it is oh uh, shit and then um did you go on the road into state to do that show no country in, kings uh, not into any of them but there were shows in other yeah, there was cities an one. yeah out, there was a vhs tape that came out but i think bigfoot went with reason and pegs to do it um i don't know if that was for culture kings two or one i've got a feeling it sure. was from the one that's online on youtube is number two Okay, yeah, after, after but the, I could be the wrong. first one, I didn't want any part of it. I was like, no, nah, you guys do your thing. <laughs> but at the time as well, like, I've never been someone who's like matey and wants to hang out with all the boys. And that's what that was the big boys club and like loud and everyone pissed. And that's not me. I'm like, I've always been more of a quiet sit in the corner and, you know, just have a quiet convo. Mm. So, you know, it's hard for me to be around big groups of people and rowdy. And it's just, you know, it's not that I'm hating on them or I don't want to be down or I don't like them. It's just I just get uncomfortable and anxious in those mm. situations. So that's what sort of that did to me, that I didn't, I sort of, I come to Paran to the park, everyone's drinking, and just, I just don't want to. The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.